Bill with our 11-year NFL veteran, Ramon Foster, Kayla Anderson. I'm Will Bowling. Lots of Titans news and NFL free agency still to discuss. And joining us this morning, NFL insider and columnist for Pro Football Network. You hear him on Fox Sports Radio, Sirius XM. Follow his work on Twitter at Kaplan NFL. He is Adam Kaplan joining us here this morning on the show. What's up, Adam? How are you? Guys, good to talk to you. Yeah, I'm uh, getting ready to leave for the owners' meetings on Sunday. Uh, I think this will be like my 20th. Looking forward to that. Probably go to a couple pro days and just roll along here as we're about five weeks from the NFL draft. Well, Adam, uh, credit to you first and foremost because uh, I remember looking at the article you had right before the start of the legal tampering period, and you had the Titans going after Tony Pollard, pursuing Calvin Ridley. Uh, all of the things that you talked about happened before free agency started. Uh, what stands out the most about the moves Rand Carthon and the Titans have made thus far? Yeah, and I, it's funny. I, I'm like, all right, I have a lot of Titans information this year for whatever reason. So I'm like, how am I going to categorize based on what I've heard? Well, they're going to be fairly aggressive. I should have said very aggressive. So Rand, look, Rand, this is his second year. And credit to the owner. Amy Adams Strunk for spending money. You know, they, she gets criticized for being cheap, whether it's fair or not. Uh, I mean, I'm certainly a good defender here. Their cash bet, I'm told, was just on contracts this year. Okay, it's always about cash, less about cap. It's about cash bet, and they're in about in the neighborhood of 80 million just for agents for just cash this year. It's a lot. It's a lot for that kind of market. So uh, they stepped it up. Look, uh, talking to other teams that faced the Titans last year. Let, let's call it like it is. Bad roster, very little speed on both sides of the football, particularly in offense. Offensive line dreadful, bottom three. They had to be aggressive. They just had to. Uh, look, that's not, you don't want to build your roster through free agency. It's got to be for the draft first. And Rand will have you know this draft coming up to do to do a lot more. But they had to do something and be aggressive. And, and credit to them. And uh, the, the only thing I'll say is you cannot win a Super Bowl by winning in free agency in March. It doesn't work that way. But you can build your roster with younger free agents. And getting Ridley, getting Cushenberry, who's terrific, getting Pollard, uh, getting, getting, getting Kenneth Murray, who needed a change of scenery. These things have a very good chance of working out. NFL insider Adam Kaplan, our guest, at Kaplan NFL on Twitter. Adam, you wrote on ProFootballNetwork.com specifically about Tony Pollard and feedback around the league regarding his signing with the Titans and, and made the note that there might also be a third running back to enter the mix. What, what kind of... A kind of closer option, as you write, might be in play for the Titans there. Yeah, so, so I, I had written a piece this week. I was not planning on doing it. What happened was, when you do what I do for a living, you, you know, have conversations with people, and every conversation that I had over like a 48-hour period, when I was calling for draft information, trying to find out about certain players, it, it just became a free agency talk. I'm like, okay, I, I probably need to do something with this information. I, and I go, hey, by the way, what, 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 what moves did you like? And a lot of them came up with Cushenberry and particularly Pollard. And I know Pollard didn't have a great season. He was coming off of a pretty significant injury. But he's explosive. He brings it. The, the, the Titans see this as a two-man backfield. But the one thing they don't have now, if they could get a lead, I don't know if they'll be up in the fourth quarter a lot, and they have a, lot, they have a long way to go here, but if, if they're up in the fourth quarter, is there really a closer on the roster? I mean, Haskins is more of a you know, power back. I mean, it could be him, as I wrote. It could be somebody else who's not on the roster right now. But these things matter to coaches, and these matter to front office people, because you always have to ask yourself this question when you're running a football team. If this happens, what is our answer? This is what I've learned from talking to coaches and executives. That's the one thing at running back I don't know if they have right now is someone, if they get a lead, to close a game. Adam Kaplan with us this morning, uh, NFL insider and columnist of Pro Football Network. I, uh, this this question comes up right here because you said the spending as far as the Titans have done so far. Your assessment of watching teams operate like this, who've been bad the year before, rebuilding, reshaping, whatever you want to call it, what is the fine balance between spending money in free agency and trying to make sure you hit on your draft picks? Well, that's the point. Like, you know, as an NFL player, look, you you got to be careful. You, you, again, you can't win in March, That's, but you, you, you target certain players. Like, they targeted Calvin Ridley. As I wrote prior to free agency, they were looking for juice. They were looking for explosion. Calvin Ridley was that guy. Now, uh, I would tell you from talking to people close to the Jaguars, they didn't think that was going to happen. They thought they were getting him, but the Jaguars did. I mean, the, Jag the Titans got him, and, and what's got to be tough is it's the same division. 
but the way that it was explained to me by Bill Polian, Hall of Fame general manager, uh, when I worked with him at ESPN was, you build through the draft always, always, always. And Bill was not a big free agency guy. He didn't, he didn't really get involved in it. But you can supplement. Talking to the Eagles over the years, you know, I, I live in the Philadelphia market, but I cover the entire league. Their belief is that you can do a little bit of both. Yes, you have. it's more about the draft. But if you sign the right players, it could work. Now, the one thing that we have to make clear here, when you're signing somebody else's players, that's what free agency is, you don't. Sometimes you don't know what you're getting. What, what you do do is you do two things: you go to your pro personnel staff, you talk to them. They have information. You go back if you had pre-draft interviews. Uh, what, Andy Reid told me this one time: they would bring in players that they may not even. When Andy was with Philly, that they may not even be drafting, but they knew in free agency four or five years down the road, they want to go back to the, those interviews. Those interviews are taped. They want to know. They want to remember what those interactions were like. So to sum this up, it's always got to be about the draft first, supplement for free agency. It's not like you're going to sign 20 free agents. I mean, they, they've signed about seven so far, and we'll see how they fit. There's, that's, that's a great <laughs> point right there. Um, it brings a whole lot of stuff into context, and it also makes me ask the question, too, when it comes down to you saying building through the draft, I think that's where your culture of your team, your standard, your type of guys come into play. What do you make of the Legereus Sneed situation as far as do you continue to, hey, give up a draft pick for a guy like him? Or do you say to yourself, hey, no, sit back. We just saw Kool-Aid McKinstry run a 4-4-7 with a drone, Jones fracture in his ankle, I mean, his foot. Do you go that route or do you say be more competitive and go get a Legereus Sneed? Well, I, I think when, when when you look at this situation, Sneed, the, the Chiefs will listen. I mean, the Chiefs the – Chiefs, Chiefs are an interesting situation. They don't have anyone who could replace him. But to this point, they've been, uh, they've been unwilling to extend his contract to the point where he would be happy and he is on the franchise tag. That, that, that would take significant draft compensation. You're looking for more than a, a first-round pick. But if you're the, just, just to extrapolate this, if you're the Titans right now, let, let, let's call it like it is. Yes, the Woozy was signed. Uh, they were looking for a guy to hold down the fort for two seasons. McCreary's more of a nickel. We're an inside player. Uh, you, you, Molden can do it as well. They, they don't have an outside corner uh, opposite of Woozy. And I always understand, folks, once, and Ramon, you know this as a player, once you get to 30 years old, they're looking to replace you. That's just the way it is. They're, they're always looking. This is the way clubs think. And unfortunately, because of Caleb Farley's injury history, he, you know, he may not factor in at all at this point. So they have to do something significant at corner. Now, you know, they could do it in the first round or second round. That's a major issue. Uh, edge rusher is another problem for this football team. They still have a lot of needs. Remember John Lynch, the general manager of the Niners, telling me you can't solve every problem one off season. And Rand Carthen's trying to address as many as he can for the near future for the next couple years. But the draft is about the future, three, four, five, six years down the line. As I just mentioned, outside corner, Sneed, you, you could look at him, uh, that possibility, but more, more realistically, folks, it's going to come in the draft. That's just the way it is. Adam Kaplan, NFL insider. You can follow him on X at Kaplan NFL. On the note of the defense, and that's really where I think fans are kind of questioning, you know, why maybe didn't we see more uh, ads in that selection, especially in the secondary, because it has been kind of a non-factor since the Logan Ryan years and, and you know, when they had those guys here. So with that, in terms of a safety, too, because you've got Imani Hooker, yep. but there's not really another guy on the uh, on the other side of him either. So what, what would you say for safety, too? Is there somebody out there they could still add for a decent price? All right, so the, what is, the way it's explained to me by personnel people around the NFL is it's still a buyer's market in the National Football League at safety. Now, there's a reason why a lot of these guys are out there. Justin Simmons is still really good. Uh, from what I understand, there are at least three or four teams that are interested in him. Uh, he does turn 31. He's an older player. Micah Hyde is out there, older player. Condre Diggs was just released. Uh, J. Ron Curse is more of a he's more of a nickel safety who's a matchup safety uh, for tight ends. To Sean Gibson, I know the Niners want him back. It, it, if you look at these contra, if you look at these players, they're all older. The only guy that that I'm a little surprised was not signed with anyone is, is Julian Blackman of the Colts. Now, he's had an injury history. He's the one young guy. Now, Marcus May, I know the Titans, as I, I said on Twitter yesterday, Denard Wilson, uh, the defense coordinator, really likes him. Uh, 
And by the way, I could also tell you they were they were they were deep into conversations about Cam Curl leading up to free agency. I thought actually there was a point where he might have signed there. He didn't he sign with the Rams, but Marcus May is a guy that they like. So how much do you feel like these new additions on this staff? You just mentioned Denard Wilson. He's worked with so many guys. Uh, you got Bill Callahan on the line. Uh, how much do you feel like that is helpful in bringing some of these these guys here where, look, they, they haven't been good for a couple of years. It's not an easy place to attract some of these guys. Yeah, I would say this. Uh, Brian Callahan's a dynamic young head coach. He's brought his dad in. Obviously, Bill Callahan is his, not that there's a Hall of Fame for offensive line coaches, but he would be right there if there happened to be one. And, you know, Lloyd Cushenberry did say that was part of the reason why he signed there. So uh, you, you have to look at that. That does matter. Um, Denard is a dynamic coach. I remember him as a player many years ago. Uh, Chris Harris, I remember covering him, who's, who's going to uh, see their defensive backs. Ben Bloom's a really good coach who's coached defensive line and linebackers for the Cowboys and, and Browns. Steve Jackson's been around for a long time. Tracy Rocker. Uh, got in the Super Bowl with the Eagles. You, you know, you, uh, Ed Dontel's son, Steve, who's, who's an up-and-coming coach. Ty Tolbert has coached a lot of great receivers in the National Football League. Randy Jordan, I remember, was a player. Nick Holtz was with the Raiders and other teams who did a great job as an offense coordinator at UNLV for a season. So, so to answer your question, it's a pretty good sort of interesting staff here. Bo Hardegree's worked with a lot of quarterbacks, worked with the Patriots. But, again, it's the roster. The roster needs a lot of upgrading, and they'll grow. These coaches will grow with this roster as Rand Carthon adds players. NFL insider Adam Kaplan, our guest, at Kaplan NFL on Twitter. Adam, we talk about a lot of Titans defensive targets, specifically in free agency. You mentioned Cam Curl. I know you've written about C.J. Garner-Johnson, D.J. Reader, another guy who has been linked to the Titans, Jerome Baker, who took a visit here and even Chase Young. I know those are case-by-case situations, and you've got some injuries, you've got some different variables in each individual signing, but what do you feel like has prevented the Titans from making that big move defensively that we're still waiting on? Well, no, they, they, again, they did look at things, but they spent so much cash on Ridley. I, they, remember, they spent a lot on, on Ridley, a lot on Cushenberry. They spent decent cash on a Woozy, decent cash on Murray. There's almost there's only so much money you're going to spend. Remember, it's about cash and and, and, and your cash spend and what's allocated by the owner, ownership and, and, the, and the president. And look, they've spent a lot of money now. Yeah, when you look at edge rusher, unless you were getting on these guys the first day, you weren't getting anyone. It was not a good free agent class at edge rusher. There were a ton of defensive tackles, but when you really look at it, they weren't in on Daniel Hunter. They weren't getting Brian Birds. That thing was done very quickly to the Giants. Grenard, I didn't hear them uh, in that. Bryce Huff, that was not happening. I was told he was going to the Eagles from day one. Now, Chase Young, it could have been a, like they could have done what the, the Saints did. But Chase Young, obviously, is coming back from um, an injury here, which is going to keep him down for a bit. Then there were secondary players. As I wrote for free agency uh, before it started, D.J. Wanham is a guy that was a, one of my top sleepers. Not a lot of fans know about him. Sign a uh, decent free agent deal with, with the Panthers. He'll get a chance to take his career to the next level. But again, guys, as I go through these names here, that's it. For, 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 you have to be careful, but it, because they were not in on Burns and Hunter and Grenard, it, it, you might as well move toward the draft. When it comes down to just the NFL free agency in general, have you ever seen more motion, more movement as far as uh, franchise quarterbacks being traded, moved to other teams? Is this going to be the new norm because of the misses on first-round quarterbacks or just quarterbacks coming out of college? Well, listen, I'll even take this a step further. I've never seen so much talk and movement with number two quarterbacks. Flacco, I I, I put out his contract information on ProFootballNetwork.com this week. Garoppolo immediately signs with the Rams. Russell Wilson, now he's going to start for the Steelers. Uh, Drew Locke moved. Sam Darnold moved. Tyrod Taylor moved. Tyler Huntley moved. Mason Rudolph, who came out of nowhere to do really well. Josh Jobs moved again. You guys know him. Mm -hmm. Uh, The Eagles ran on Easton Stick, but he went back to the Chargers. Mariota moved to Washington. Look look at all this movement. This This is, and then of course Cousins, if you look at the big movers, Kirk Cousins with that $45 million a year deal, a two-year structure on a four-year deal, to be the, the Falcons franchise quarterback for at least two seasons of a four-year deal. You're right. I mean, a lot of movement. Jacoby Brissett moved again. It's, this is, I've not seen it. J- James Winston, yeah. And, and by the way, Ryan Tannehill's still out there. Yeah. That's been a little bit of a surprise. 
I was going to ask you that, too, to follow up on that. Do you feel like, I mean, he's going to land somewhere, obviously. Yep. Where would you feel like would be the best fit at this point since really a lot of the pieces have moved? I Typically at this point, when I talk to clubs, it's usually the, who, who has experience with this player. I had written weeks ago that here are the five quarterbacks the Steelers are looking at. Tannehill was lower on the Steelers list, and obviously they didn't wind up going in that direction. You're right, yeah, he'll have a job by training camp, and he's in his mid-30s, he's not starving, nothing needs to happen. It's going to be hard. I mean, it, it's simply where there's not a number two quarterback. Uh, you know, as I go through my list here, there are not a lot of openings here. Um, yeah, I, I honestly, guys, they're just they're, there's just that. With Tyrod Taylor going to the Jets, I know the Jets are looking at a bunch of quarterbacks that, that Taylor's filled that role. There's just not a lot of options there, uh, and Dobbs just signed with the Niners this week. It's hard unless now again we, we're we're in the third week of March here. Quarterbacks could be cut, players could be cut after the draft. That could open up some openings here uh, for him. But I'm not seeing a natural fit right now. Adam Kaplan with us this morning. You can follow him on Twitter at Kaplan NFL. Uh, I, I'm gonna throw some numbers at y'all. You're probably gonna be shocked real quick, but right. one one hundred million, um, fifty three million, and fifty million. Those are numbers given out to interior offensive linemen in this uh, free agency cycle right now. Is that gonna be the new norm, or this is just a market saying, "Hey, we'll give the interior guys a little bit of a bone." And me myself, being a former guard, I love seeing this type of stuff because the tackles have always gotten all the love, and we said we are football players too. I know, but see, Ramon, you know from with the Steelers, they do contracts a certain way. It, it's I study contracts, like, and the Steelers, you know, they 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 don't give a lot of guarantees. It's usually a massive signing bonus, big base salary year one, and that's it for guarantees. Now, as we move along here, the Eagles made Landon Dickerson the highest paid guard in NFL history at twenty one million, and the, the structure is very good. But yeah, you, you Cushenberry got a nice deal. A bunch of guards are getting paid. Yeah, is that the new norm? Yes, because once one guy does it, clubs can't say, "Well, we're not doing that." It's particularly if they drafted the player and the guy's a great football player, they got to pay him. On the center market now, with Kelsey, Jason Kelsey retiring, he was the highest paid center for for a bunch of years. Those those dollars could be fifteen million a year. Uh, the guard market is now twenty one million a year. Yeah, it is going up though. To answer, it's a good question. Uh, the tackle market is going up, uh, but. Every team has a philosophy of what they're going to pay and not going to pay. Well, the Rams, by the way, they just paid two guards $17 million a year. I was stunned. Uh, Kevin Dotson, who I'm told the Steelers didn't want, he went, came out of nowhere. I, I was, he played great football. Good for him, and his agent did a great job, $17 million a year. Jonah Jackson and the Lions didn't make a hard play to resign, $17 million a year. You're right. That's the money is going up at the guard position, no question. And your expert opinion, just real quick, well, if if you're picking that seven with what the Titans need, you going D B or you going playmaker or Joe Alt. Oh boy. Okay, so if you and I are running the show and if I'm if I'm the general manager and you're my lieutenant, um I'll I, if I'm making a call, if I'm turning the card in I take the edge rusher over the lineman, but I I know this. You may disagree with me. If it's your call, I'll go with what you want. It's hard to find edge rushers. It, it's really it, their line is so bad. It, it's got a, it, it. It probably it, it's a it's edge rusher left tackle. I mean, take your pick. I how about this one? The best available edge rusher or left tackle there. Whatever whoever has the highest grade. That's it. But see, with, with the run on quarterbacks, is going to be primed that either one of them can be there. Who's as beauty's in the eye of the beholder, I guess. <laughs> and then with Joe, listen, Joe Alt, Joe Alt's a stud. There's no question about it. And look, Skronsky's playing inside. They've got two. They've got two building blocks right now. Skronsky and Cushenberry. That's it. Rand Carthon knows he's he's been around the game with his father and, and he's won a lot in his career. He knows the best way to build your football team is with the lines, offensive, defensive lines. That's where it has to start. The Titans still are a long ways away from being a playoff team. If Rand could just do that, just build year to year, going with their offensive line and, and defensive line and edge rushers, then build from the back, then this thing's got a great chance of getting turned around. Adam Kaplan bringing us the goods this morning. Ooh. NFL insider and columnist for Pro Football Network. You hear him on Sirius XM, Fox Sports Radio, and everywhere on Twitter at Kaplan NFL. Adam, great stuff. Thanks so much. Definitely. Thanks, Adam. Bye. Thank you. See you.
right. Absolutely. There's Adam Kaplan with us this morning. Lots of info there we will react to coming up next. And an edge rusher conversation that we have not heard elsewhere that you just heard right here on RKW. We'll react coming up.